a bit of an announcement because I didn't realize this yesterday when I promised to be back on stream today, but in about two hours, actually about one hour, Genshin Impact's uh, servers are going to be down because they're going to be performing maintenance in, pre in preparation for the 2.1 update coming later tonight. So their servers are going to be down during my normal streaming hours, which is, of course, six to whenever. But I'm not going to be able to stream tonight, so I do apologize for that. But I will be having more content for you guys tomorrow. But to, let's get into the video today. So today I want to talk about why I love PC gaming, because um, recently I decided I needed to start getting rid of things I'm not using, things I'm just not really... I really don't have a use for or don't have a need to keep a hold of. And one of those things was my Xbox One. I've currently got it listed up on Facebook Marketplace, and I'm hoping to maybe make a sale before the end of the week. But um, I wanted to talk about this because I feel like, at least for me, PC gaming is a better option. And I, I think it might be a better option for some of you if you already have the capability to game on your system or if you've been saving up for, like, say, the new Xbox or the new PlayStation, but might want a bit more functionality than that. So here are some of my reasonings behind this. So for my first point, I want to go, I want, I want to come over to the um, Xbox app that you can find on Windows. So this is specifically targeting Windows gaming computers. Now, if you're a Linux gamer, I don't know about that. Although I hear that there are workarounds to still be able to play Windows, um, you know, compatible games on Linux, thanks to Steam and stuff. But beyond that, I don't really know anything about that. So I'm working with what I know. But here we are, and right now I'm in the Xbox app. And this is the Xbox Game Pass section of the Xbox app. Now, if you'll notice right here, there's a button that says All Game Pass PC Games. If I click this, you see that I have access to about, it says about 100 different games through Game Pass. And here's here's the thing about Game Pass. I'm going to go ahead and show you my, um, I'm going to show you what uh, subscription I've got for this. So I have Game Pass Ultimate. Now this is $15 a month and I'm currently in the process. I, I just changed my settings to where after this month's uh, service is over, it will be switched over to Game Pass for PC. Now, Game Pass for PC is the same thing as Game Pass Ultimate with um, one, well, two less things, really. Play games on your mobile phone and tablet from the cloud. Exclusive free perks. Um, so basically, um, the only two perks that really get taken away that might be valuable are playing games in the cloud and free perks. But beyond that, the only other thing is removing Xbox Live Gold, which is a requirement for playing console multiplayer. But on PC, you don't need to worry about console, I mean, worry about that extra fee because on PC, you can, you can play multiplayer for free. So um, what you get for $9.99 over here Access to over 100 quality PC games. New games added all the time. Xbox Game Studio titles the same day as release. Member discounts and access to EA Play. So what's EA Play? That's this. That's this section of the EA app. This is new. It's in beta. So, you know, it might be different by the time you get to it. But if you look at this, you've got Need for Speed. You've got Rockin' Arena, you've got Madden, you've got all the sports games you could want. You got you got Anthem. You've got you've got games like like Battlefront and um, Mass Effect, Shantae. You've got loads of games that you can play. So that's a hundred games from Game Pass plus 
however many games are included in the EA stuff, you, you've got a huge library of games. You'll never run out of stuff to play because, like I said, they switch things out every once in a while. You might only have certain games for a limited time, and then after they're gone, the new ones come in, and you're like, oh, I haven't played this one before. Let's play that. So that's a really great option if you're, uh, if you've got a low budget for PC games, but you still want to have a, a, a decent library of things that you can play. That's, that's an amazing thing. So beyond Xbox and um, EA, you've also got a few other um, options. Now, right here is the Epic Games Store. So I want to direct you to something here about um, something I found out fairly early on in my gaming um, experience on PC. Well, what? They're remaking Saints Row? Yeah, well, add that to my wish list. <laughs> I'll be doing a review on that, hopefully. But if you scroll down here to this free games section on the Epic Games Store, and yes, you need an account, but it's really just as simple as signing up for anything, and you don't need to have um, a credit card or anything for this. It's not like, oh, well, it's a free trial. No, it's completely free. But every couple of weeks, they offer you two free games. And so, and then there are all these free-to-play games like Magic the Gathering Arena, Dauntless, Warface, Genshin Impact, Rocket League, Fortnite. Um, geez, you got loads of games here you can play. I don't think I'll, I don't think I would ever run out of games I could play if I really wanted to. I mean, seriously, it's almost almost like endless. It it it, it truly is epic. But you've got the Epic Games Store, and you've got that option. And out of all the games that I have in my library, I've only ever paid for two out of the 55 I have. So I paid for Splinter Cell Double Agent, and for some reason it won't play on my computer. And I played to be able to play The Outer Worlds when it was still exclusive on the Epic Games Store because I wanted to play the story and see how it was. Spoiler alert, it wasn't as good as why, what I was hoping. It's no Fallout New Vegas, unfortunately. But it's still decent. It's decent. So the last platform I want to take a look at, and the one I'm going to have to actually pause the video for a second for, is Steam. So this, of course, is the Steam store, the Steam launcher. Now, of course, you've got all the, the standard stuff. You know, you've got your... Uh, special offers, your weekly sales and stuff. You've got ads for the Steam Deck, for the Valve Index. Um, personally, if I could ever get my hands on a Steam Link, I would, because running running a 25-foot HDMI cord to my TV doesn't really help me with the fact that I still need an extension cord to be able to plug in my, my controller and still use it <laughs> because I don't have Bluetooth on my PC. But, okay, so... I want to I want to have you look at all this. Now, this is just all the games that I have installed on my PC. Now, if I were to, I don't know, can I actually I don't think I can, but you see I've got 71 RPG games, 68 indie games, 73 play, free to play games, 45 games that are controller supported. I've probably got over a hundred different games in this in, in my entire library, and a lot of them are actually really, really dang good. Um, right now I'm playing Saints Row 4 and Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne um pretty frequently on my on this PC. When I'm not playing Genshin Impact, of course. Genshin Impact is of course my favorite of all the games that I play. Now, I have dabbled in games like um, um, Miss Messages, which is a free-to-play game that's more of a story game. I've, uh, you know, I, I've seen ads for, play, for games like Counter-Strike, Shadowverse, Neverwinter. I, I just, I like, uh, 
134 games total that I have in my collection. Most of them I either bought on sale or I have them as free to play. So it's not like I've gotten a whole lot of these games. Um, please pretend you didn't see that one game. Please pretend I, uh, I didn't know what it was. I didn't, <laughs> but, uh, I, I just, I like steam as well. I do. Um, most of the games that I have are on these three platforms. Now you can find other games on other platforms like, um, let's see, there's, uh, uh, let's see, let's see. Um, Game Jolt, that's one. There's Game Jolt, there's itch.io. And they have tons of free and paid games. You can get games like, um, well, let's just look. You can get fan games for just about anything. You, can, you wouldn't imagine the amount of Undertale last Delta Rune fan projects that there are on here. Um, Baldi's Basics has its own community, I guess. Undertale, yep, yep, yep. Sonic, Rayman, Gun Knight, Crown Trick. Uh, lots of horror games that are just weird. And then they're just weird games, not even horror games, just weird ones. But there are a lot of good indie games as well. I mean, it's not all just and games, there are other, there there are other games that are pretty dang good too. Like uh, right now we've got a few that are actually priced pretty pretty decently. They're free and are really good. I have I have really enjoyed just seeing what kind of games that you can find on platforms like this. And then of course there's uh. uh RPGmaker.net, which is a community just for RPG Maker games that you can find anything you want. I mean, seriously, if you had an idea for a for a, a uh, an RPG Maker video game, it's probably been done here. Like there are Doctor Who fan games, uh, Pokemon fan games. Buying Little Pony fan games for some reason. All kinds of different... Black Moon Prophecy 1 and 2 are definitely my two uh, most recommended if you ever come here and need to find something to play. Um, those are great. Um, just, you know, you've got lots of options as a PC gamer, whereas on console, what you get is what you get. <laughs> you really can't pick and choose with, with console because it's... It's just less of a hassle to release your game on PC because there aren't any gatekeepers saying, no, we don't accept anything except for top tier quality type games. And we're sorry, but you don't meet that last tenth of a percent to get there. You really don't. That's the thing that I really don't like about console gaming. Probably the only thing is that in order to get an indie game, especially on a console, you really need to either have an Irishman's luck or your fingers in someone's wallet going here. I'll, I'll pay you to put it on the platform. I'll pay you to expedite this process. And that's the unfortunate thing is that you want to see more indie games on a console like the Xbox one or the Nintendo Switch, or even the the PS5, but or the Xbox or the Xbox Series X or whatever, but you can't because there's such a high fence and there's only one gatekeeper and that's whatever company owns the console. Whereas on PC, nobody owns the PC market. Everybody has a share. Everybody has a place which is why I love it. And that's why I'm developing a game for PC first. Now, while I, will I eventually try, try 
to get it on the console? Sure. Will I probably reach out to a more reputable publisher to actually do it? Probably. I'll probably reach out to the uh, to the guys that put To the Moon on the Switch. But until that time comes, I'm just hoping to get my game out and have as many people as want to be able to play it and be able to enjoy it. But that's why I love PC gaming. Is because it's an any person's market, not just a a rich a rich company or a rich game developers market. You can truly do whatever you want on PC because there are no limits and no rules. Good Lord, aren't there any rules? Because I've seen some pretty questionable games. Pretty questionable, especially in the visual no novel market. So. Don't even get me started. <laughs> no, just no. But anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And I hope you guys are blessed to be gaming on whatever device you game on. Whether it's your phone, your tablet, your computer, or your console. I love you all so very much. I'll see you all again soon. Until then, take care of yourselves and have a wonderful night. Thank you for being here. And for being part of my experience here on The Wandering Wind.